हेलो एवरीवन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज बाय विनिंग एच और आज की वीडियो में हम बात करने वाले हैं स्पीच राइटिंग के बारे में स्पीच राइटिंग एक ऐसा टॉपिक है जो कि स्कूल्स में हम ज़्यादा नहीं देखते हैं और ना ही ज़्यादातर एग्जामिनेशन प्रिपेयर करते वक्त हम इसकी प्रैक्टिस करते हैं बट ऑफन हम देखते हैं कि एग्जाम में स्पीच राइटिंग के ऊपर कभी कभी रेयरली क्वेश्चन आ जाता है ठीक है सो आज हम स्टडी करने वाले हैं स्पीच राइटिंग कैसे लिखा जाता है वट आर द बेसिक पॉइंट जिनके बारे में हमें ख्याल रखना चाहिए कि हम उसमें कोई मिस्टेक ना करें ठीक है सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट विद दिस विदाउट एनी डिले बट उससे पहले अगर आपने चैनल को सब्सक्राइब नहीं करा है वीडियो को लाइक नहीं करा है तो मेक श्योर यू डू दैट और जो भी आपका फीडबैक हो वेद इज गुड और बैड यू कैन पुट इट डाउन इन द कमेंट सेक्शन एज वेल ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल चिल्ड्रन व्हाट इज स्पीच राइटिंग स्पीच राइटिंग का मतलब क्या होता है अब देखो स्पीच हम सबने देखा है ना वी सी द प्राइम मिनिस्टर गिविंग स्पीच वी सी द प्रेसिडेंट गिविंग स्पीच वी सी द स्कूल प्रिंसिपल गिविंग स्पीच है ना सो देयर वेरियस काइंड्स ऑफ स्पीचेस ना स्पीच का मोटिव क्या होता है स्पीच इज इदर इट इज गिवन इन द बिगिनिंग ऑफ ओकेजन और इट इज गिविंग ड्यूरिंग द एंड ऑफ द ओकेजन ठीक है बिगिनिंग ऑफ द ओकेजन में स्पीच का बहुत ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंस होता है बिकॉज इट इज गोइंग टू सेट द मूड ऑफ द ओकेजन ठीक है सो लेट्स से द प्राइम मिनिस्टर इज गिविंग अ सर्टन स्पीच लेट्स से इन द बिगिनिंग ऑफ सर्टन ओकेजन ठीक है लेट्स से इट्स समथिंग रिलेटेड एनवायरनमेंट ठीक है उस पे कोई प्रोग्राम है देयर इज प्राइम मिनिस्टर प्रेजेंट एंड ही इज गिविंग अ स्पीच नाउ इफ द प्राइम मिनिस्टर गिव्स अ डल स्पीच एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम देन द एंटायर मूड ऑफ दैट ओकेजन और दैट इवेंट विल गो डाउन राइट दैट एंथुसियाज्म विल लैग बट इफ द स्पीच देयर इज वेरी एंथुसियास्टिक इट इज वेरी नाइस देन व्हाट व्हाट वी विल सी इज दैट द एंटायर मूड ऑफ द ऑडियंस विल चेंज राइट दे विल बी एंथुसियास्टिक अबाउट द प्रोग्राम दे विल वांट टू लर्न दे विल वांट टू सी व्हाट इज देयर इन इट राइट सो स्पीच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन दैट सेंस एंड फॉर द एंडिंग पार्ट अगर स्पीच एंडिंग में होती है तो दैट स्पीच इज देयर टू कंक्लूड एवरीथिंग व्हाटएवर हैज हैपेंड ड्यूरिंग दैट ड्यूरेशन ऑफ द इवेंट ठीक है whether it's a six month thing कोई कोर्स है उसके एंडिंग में स्पीच है कोई पर्टिकुलर डे का इवेंट था उसके एंड में स्पीच है स्पोर्ट्स डे की स्पीच दे रहा है कोई चीफ गेस्ट और थिंग्स लाइक दैट ठीक है सो आई विल जस्ट रीड आउट व्हाट वी हैव हियर ऑन स्क्रीन इट सेस स्पीच राइटिंग इज अ मेथड ऑफ कन्वेइंग अ थॉट ऑन अ मैसेज टू अ रीडर यूजिंग द करेक्ट पंक्चुएशन एंड एक्सप्रेशन ठीक है नाउ हियर यू नो दिस स्पीच इज जनरली गिवन ओवर द माइक टू द ऑडियंस राइट बट हियर व्हाट वी आर डूइंग इज वी आर राइटिंग डाउन द स्पीच ओके सो द स्पीच हैज टू बी देयर आर सर्टेन थिंग्स दैट यू हैव टू टेक केयर ऑफ व्हाइल राइटिंग डाउन द स्पीच For example, uh, uh, let's say uh, an expression like "come, don't go," ठीक है? Or let's say "don't come, go." हम ऐसे बोल रहे हैं "don't come." गो अगर मैं यहाँ पे हम ऐसा कर दें "don't come" के बाद कॉमा लगा दें और फिर बोलें "don't come, go." ठीक है? और अगर मैं इसको ऐसे बोलना चाहूँ "don't go, come." राइट सो दोनों का अलग अलग मीनिंग बन रहा है सो यहाँ पे जो रीडर है रीडर डज नॉट नो योर फेस ठीक है रीडर डज नॉट सेइंग योर फेशियल एक्सप्रेशंस वाइल यू आर राइटिंग डाउन दिस ना ही रीडर को उसकी टोन मालूम है सो द वे यू राइट इट द पंचुएशन यू यूज दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दैट वे द मैसेज इज गोइंग टू बी कन्वेड राइट सो यू माइट हैव ऑफन नोटिस यू नो यू माइट बी टेक्सटिंग ऑन व्हाट्सएप और समथिंग लाइक दैट देर इज अ ऑप्शन टू यूज इमोजीज है ना तो इमोजीज एक्चुअली गिवन एक्सप्रेशन टू योर टेक्स्ट सो समटाइम्स वॉट हैपन इफ समन gives you a text without uh, emoji or something you may also feel ki usne gusse mein bola he might have said it in anger or he said it in a bad tone or a good tone you are not able to identify that right so expression is very important while writing down the speech the speech writing isn't much different from any other form of uh, writing however there are some different punctuation and writing structure techniques that you should understand students now we'll uh, read about more in this coming session ahead so let's see what is it so speech writing is the method of conveying ye hum already aapko bata chuke hain theek hai ab yahan pe speech writing ke eight parts hote hain there are matlab eight things that you should be careful that is which is very basic grammar only theek hai nouns uh, proper names proper towns proper cities all of those theek hai keep them in capitals and you know make sure you give them proper noun uh, proper spellings then pronouns you have to be careful about you don't change he into she she into he they into them or all that those things you have to be careful while writing on the speech verbs theek hai verbs ka aapko khayal rakhna hai that is the activity which is going on adjectives what kind of adjectives are you using are you using adjectives which are giving a negative tone to your sentence or giving a positive tone that have to be taken care of adverbs similarly children prepositions aap kaise use karte ho prepositions also make a huge difference to your speech theek hai conjunctions uh, mostly hum jo conjunctions use karte hain speech writing mein we use simple conjunctions so as to make our speech understandable to the reader or to the person who is listening ठीक है एंड इंटरजेक्शंस लाइक हे हुरा एंड अलास एंड ऑल ऑफ दोस थिंग्स आल्सो कैन बी यूज्ड ड्यूरिंग द स्पीच राइटिंग ठीक है 
Now, uh, we'll just uh, see each of these parts of speech in little detail. So, now, you know, naming of uh, things, animal, people, places, insects, and all insects I'm saying, feelings, okay? These are things we have to keep in mind. Pronoun, mein, you know, whether it is he, she, it, that you have to take care of. And, uh, you know, you try to avoid using them and again and again, okay? So, we can't use noun once again. So, what do we use noun use again? We use pronoun once use karte hai, pronoun use karte then children you have verb verb is you know what is the activity going on kya kaam kar rahe ho? that has to be taken care of Take it, this is particularly important for your kids grammar Take it, so you know grammar ke mein pata hai. of course agar english language ka paper hai, pe aapki grammar check hogi hi hogi Take now adjective adjective is also known as the describing word ye hum sabko pata hai adjective kisi bhi cheez ki khasiyat batate tells about detail of that thing right so adjective usually comes before a noun to provide more detail or information you know then preposition ki baat karte hai. A preposition is a word that tells you where or when something is in relation to something else. Take it. Just say I am going towards the office. My office ki taraf ja raho. So it's telling a relation, right? The injunction, you know, which is used to join sentences as I previously told you. Take it. Now there are primarily a joining words which connect two sentences, thoughts or ideas. Interjections, a sudden emotion express karne wale. By the way, I have made video on all of these topics that are there on your screen. Preposition, conjunction, interjection and very very nice video with a lot of hard work you must check out those videos as well children now uh, speeches as I told you they are a way to communicate to the public okay? now they are made by politicians and other than power they are usually made in order to change people's mind hai na? so if I have को कोई एनवायरनमेंट uh, के बारे में लेट्स टेक द सेम एग्जांपल एनवायरनमेंट के बारे में अवेयर करना चाहता हूं ठीक है सो आई मे राइट अ स्पीच व्हिच इज रिलेटेड टू एनवायरनमेंट एंड आई मे से इट इफ आई हैव अ पोजीशन आई हैव अ यू नो पावर सो आई कैन रीच आउट टू मेनी पीपल सो आई कैन से इट ठीक है सो स्पीचेस आर यूज्ड टू एक्चुअली कन्वे सम मैसेज राइट स्पीचेस आर अ फॉर्म ऑफ परसुएसिव राइटिंग टेक अ लुक हियर टू फाइंड आउट मोर अबाउट परसुएसिव राइटिंग नाउ ये क्या है किसी को कुछ काम करने के लिए कन्वे करना कन्विंस करना now to convey information only to a large gathering of people forcefully or convincingly and to convert the listeners to speak at a point of view. Now let's say what happens, you know, uh, some uh, some crowd or some people in a kingdom move to the king take care, and the king has to deliver a speech. Now the people are, let's say, worried about a foreign invasion. Take care, but the king uh, delivers a speech, makes them feel confident about the military or the army of the king and he says you know our soldiers are right there and they are going to protect you so that will change the point of view of the listeners right now it was also used to pass on a wide range of information to a wide range of audiences oh really now let's say uh, the prime minister has to make a big message right now the prime minister cannot uh, make uh, convey every message through sms email or you know uh, people can't come to your home to tell your message but the easiest way is to what the prime minister can say that you know i will be delivering a speech at this this time and if one must watch the speech so the, when uh, the whole of the country will watch that speech obviously that message will be conveyed to a wide range of people right and it is also used to express an opinion to share a point of view experience observation so while delivering the speech the uh, prime minister may also share his opinion about something he may also share a relative experience some observation and things like that okay so you have quick idea ho gaya, uh, what you call it speech item mein kya -kya hum, hamare bas rehti hai. now while let's say imagine yourself children a big speech dene ja rahe ho. what will you do first of all you're going to greet uh, all the special people or the vip so-called vip people are there right uh, the chief guest, uh, fellow speakers, listeners, you will greet salutation, good morning, good evening, uh, or uh, you know, whatever you want to speak. Then the key sentence carries the central theme or issue of the speech. Now here, uh, while opening your speech, you have to talk about a uh, highlighted sentence, you know, jo aapki speech ka objective batane wala hai. what is your speech about, okay? Then the speaker may express his or her views on the particular topic, whatever uh, they have conveyed in the key sentence, okay? Now, you have to also understand, you know, that uh, when you put down a speech, the speech has to be... Uh, all-rounder sort of thing. What do we mean by all-rounder? It doesn't have to be one way, okay? Like, uh, we talked about this kingdom and the king. 
where the king delivers a speech that you know uh, the public or in general it needs not to be afraid that the the king has the control over the army the soldiers and they're there to protect the kingdom right now in that sense uh, the king also has to tell you know what are uh, the actual uh, problems that the army may be facing or the people or the soldiers may be facing to fight the foreign invasions right so he has to compare and contrast and then tell okay yes we are doing this to fight those opponents you know? so he has to give a complete viewpoint not just one side okay if you give a one-sided point of view then of course people will think you know that he, uh, the person is just barbering about uh, his point and not actually talking about the reality right so when we are talking about speech writing or delivering a speech we have to take up things in contrast the right one the wrong ones take care uh, the problem the solution so they'll have to be kept in consideration and lastly part me uh, kya hai, children summing up and concluding so your uh, speech writing mein jo summing up hai it is very very important why it is very very important because when a reader is listening to your reader is reading your speech or a listener is listening to your speech okay uh, you might have said a lot of things right out of those some particular things the reader or the listener might remember sara kuch to yaad nahi rahega usse right now when you sum up your speech you re revisit or you revise certain points that you have already spoken okay so in conclusion whatever it would be you have to always put down the points that you definitely want your reader to remember or your listener to remember that yes this is what i said okay so those are the points which you have to put down in conclusion okay so those are the points that are going to stay with the reader because one time they heard it already then in conclusion in different words and synonymous words you are revisiting them you know you are telling them again you are repeating those points in a different way but what uh, you know to express your point there okay if we have some more points let's see what are those a speech must begin with a catchy introduction in the form of anecdote quotation statistical data or thought provoking question so you know you might uh, start off your speech with the you know i am this 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 i was born this 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 and blah 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 and you may say all it around but no one might be interested in this thing so you have to start up with something that uh, you know uh, gets attention from the people okay that could be a quotation from one famous person for example someone starts with a quotation from the mahatma gandhi mahatma gandhi said and then they start up with the quotation theek okay? hai so everyone will say okay this is about mahatma gandhi right or you may start with mother teresa you know mother teresa said and then you put down there theek okay? hai or you may ask a certain question you know that will provoke everyone to yes think what would be the answer of it or you may put down some data some information statistic which would you know really compel people to listen to you right so that is the beginning of a speech so always try to put that uh, whenever you are writing on a speech always try to start with some quotation some data or some thought provoking question theek okay? hai now your speech should be very very accurate about the data that you are using theek hai jo facts aap use kar rahe ho the information that you are providing it is not a work of friction theek hai it is people are listening to it and they are going to cross verify what you have said so if you if you just say something uh, wrong some information wrong then they are going to you know uh, say that you know this this uh, speaker is a very flawed kind of person or this politician is flawed he quotes wrong data you know he is trying to uh, misguide us or giving us wrong information so those have to be kept in mind so it must bring credibility to be used through quoting of adequate supporting data so agar aap adequate supporting data dete and you also mention the source you know i have taken up this data from this this or you say you have received this information from world health organization or something like that then it brings credibility to your speech that yes you are talking about something accurate you are talking about something real right and you must also infuse humor humor is something like a joke or a, you know slight uh, something that can bring a smile on to people's face or some experience that is funny or things like that which can make the speech uh, go into a different mood and not just monotonous agar hum ek hi tone mein sari baatein karte rahenge then the reader may get bored it may become monotonous for them so we have to break that theek okay? hai then uh, in the ending i have of course told you about the conclusion aapko apne ideas is tarah se kaise put karne hain theek hai aur sum up karne apne important points and you can also put in पर्सनल ऑब्जर्वेशन जो आप पर्सनली फील करते हो किसी चीज़ के बारे में या फिर आपको लगता है कि फ्यूचर में ऐसा होने वाला है समथिंग माइट हैपन लाइक दिस विद द थिंग्स गोइंग ऑन अराउंड यू लेट्स टॉक अबाउट योर स्कूल यू मे थिंक यू नो यू आर गिविंग अ स्पीच एट द स्कूल एंड यू प्रिडिक्ट दैट यू नो इन द कमिंग टेन ईयर्स योर स्कूल विल हैव अनदर कैंपस सो दोज काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स कैन यू पुट देर 
Now, vote of thanks to the audience must be delivered at the end. Now, you always have to, when you end your speech, you know, you have to give to importance to the listeners, okay, or the reader, that you're, you're giving a vote of thanks, that thanks for listening to me patiently, you know. You may not have said the points that they wanted to hear, but you went ahead and said, right? So, you have to thank the listener for listening to you, and that gives the audience, you know, a better impression of you, that yes, you are so kind and considerate, that you are thanking them for just listening to you. Right? So that puts a big impression on your personality there. So which is also important part of speech writing. Now you always put it down in appropriate form and style. Okay? Uh, you always have to keep it within the word limit. Okay? Let's say if the speech writing is given to you for 250 words. You must not extend more than 250 words. Okay? Because if you go beyond that, your marks will of course get deducted there. Okay? Now let's move forward. And uh, the next thing which we have is... How do you start a speech in English language? Okay. How you begin your speech in English language uh, can set the tone of rest of your speech. Now, let's say you start it uh, with a lot of uh, enthusiasm and a lot of energy. Okay. And you'll try to maintain that throughout your speech. But if you started with a low tone and you did not realize you thought I was doing fine and then your entire speech will go into a low tone and maybe it will become boring for the audience, right? So there are multiple ways as I already told you. You can put up stats, you can put up imaginary scene, you can put up questions, all those kind of things are there, okay? Now, <clears throat> moving on, uh, the next point here we have is you should have a structure and a heading. Okay, what do we mean by structure and heading? When you're writing speech, children, you need to focus on structure. That too, how I am going to convey my point. Okay, what am I going to talk in the first five thirty, first thirty seconds? What I'm going to talk about for the next two minutes? What is going to be my conclusion? What should be the main point in the conclusion? So all of those points have to be kept into consideration. That structure has to be made by you before writing down a speech. So you have to draft your speech first. Okay. And of course, as I told you, because when you're writing the speech, you cannot have a, uh, like, you have to have a catchy title or a heading, okay, that can make the interest of the reader to read your speech, okay. Now, there are certain examples given, uh, the opening line could be, this includes situation, introduction, and the topic, make sure you do not mention your personal details, like name, school, okay. Now, the purpose of speech is just to engage people and convince them to think the way you think okay or to convince them to think something the way you want to the best part is that to create an opening line that states your intention a question or a shocking statics okay or sub best always try to quote down some quotation or some data which can you know really provoke people to think okay example hai speech writing example uh, respected uh, principal teacher and my dear friends today I stand before you all to speak on the topic, whatever the topic is, okay? So, uh, you can, or also you can start up with a certain quotation, okay? Uh, for example, let's say, start with Mahatma Gandhi, okay? Now, you can start with the highest fiber must burn in the fire of love. If it is, if it does not melt, the fire is not strong enough. So, then you can say Mahatma Gandhi said, and then you can start, you know, respected principal, sir, teacher, and my dear friends, today I stand here to uh, put my views on this topic and etc, etc. Okay. Now, body, as I've already told you, body is the main part here that you have to talk about. Okay. A small introduction in the beginning would be nice to put more emphasis on your speech. Okay. Then uh, you need to also explain the current situation or problem uh, that you relate to in your particular topic. For example, uh, let's say uh, we took an example of expansion of the school campus, right? So if there's any problem uh, in that, that you can address that problem also that yes, we are working on it and the near future, you know, that's going to be resolved and things like that. Now, it may include advantage, disadvantage, depending upon topic in question. So, speech writing, you know, you personally think that way about the topic and that will always, uh, you know, make you easy for it to write, right? And sometimes it may be a disadvantage, you may not think about that topic that particular way. Then you have to think uh, opposite of your own thinking to put it down, right? Now, here it is also important, children, to follow a sequence, matlab, like a structure I have told you, right? So, you may have many points, okay? Or a very few points, but you have to put them in order so that the listener can actually understand what you're trying to say, okay? The listener can take it away. It shouldn't be that the listener put it into one ear and they remove it from the other ear. That should not be the case. So, you have to sequence it to follow it in a comprehensive manner so that everyone is able to stick to your point of view. 
Now you have to strictly follow the prescribed word limit in a limited time frame. That must not change. Okay. Now, uh, in the concluding paragraph, as I have previously explained you, concluding paragraph में आपको क्या करना है? आपको बहुत ज़्यादा detail में नहीं बताना है, ठीक है? आपको बस अपनी ending में चीज़ें बतानी है, what are you going to do, what you have already done, ठीक है? And what do you feel about the particular occasion or the event if you are present as a guest or whatever or you know, you have been called on to judge something or whatever it is, ठीक है? So, a uh, vote of thanks has to be definitely put in the ending there, ठीक? Now let's see one example here. It is write a speech in about 250 words on the topic war against terrorism. Okay? So let's see what is this. Uh, it says ladies and gentlemen, terrorism is a worldwide phenomenon today. Terrorists are not born, they are made. Causes are many, but some causes are common. Sometimes a certain group of people have to face injustice and exploitation for a long time. Such groups after some time retaliate. This retaliation turns out to be terrorism. Some hostile nations are also responsible for terrorist activities. The 9-11 attack on the Twin Towers of World Trade Center is a proof that these groups have made terrorism a worldwide phenomenon. The US had taken action against this and had eliminated Osama bin Laden to curb this activity. Okay. Time and again, these groups have attacked various places in India and the world. The bomb attacks in Ahmedabad, Akshardham temple in Gandhi Nagar had caused death and destruction. For a long time, the Indian government warned the nations who helped in grooming these terrorists. Ultimately, steps were taken to let the terrorists know that India and the whole world is against these activities. Surgical attacks were conducted. A large number of innocent people are killed by the terrorists for some cause which is not a reality. The world must join hands to wipe out terrorism, which is like a plague spreading everywhere. We have to combat terrorism. If this is done, there is some hope to get rid of terrorism. So you see children uh, here, a uh, speech is given. It's a very, very simple and precise speech. It talks about war against terrorism. So very clearly, you know, it sums up ki terrorism kya hai, how is it born. You know, it uh, tries to give you some idea that, you know, certain people who are deprived of uh, certain rights, they are deprived of justice, you know. After some time, they try to retaliate, they try to give back what they have been given, right? So that and certain hostile nations which try to you know push down certain nations also result in terrorism in those countries okay then he gave you a uh, good example of 9-11 as an example of terrorist attack and then he explained to you that you know how terrorism can be combated how we can fight against so see uh, the main topic was war against terrorism so the biggest paragraph which you can see is the last paragraph which is actually based on war on terrorism okay so aapko topic pe stick hona hai, and that is what ultimately brings you points in your speech we have one more example that we are going to finish uh, before ending this video, children. This is about women empowerment. So all of you know about women empowerment. Women empowerment is a movement where uh, the women are tried to empower or the women which are, you know, deprived of certain basic rights. They are deprived of education or equality in society. So to finish all those injustices, all those inequalities, a moment, uh, woman empowerment is there, right? So it's a very, very common topic on which uh, speech writing is there. So let's see what does this particular paragraph say. It says woman empowerment. Ladies and gentlemen, ours is a male-dominated society. Progress of women is neglected. It is taken for granted that women are meant to perform household duties only. Men have advantage over women in almost all fields. But all these arguments prove futile when it comes to providing education to women. Women are the backbone of the society and as such, they cannot be neglected. To educate them is the most important and foremost duty of the society. The idea that women are meant to do only household work is absurd. Educated women will always prove better mothers and efficient managers of their families. Bringing up children is the best possible manner is very necessary and for this education of women is essential. Women are capable of receiving the highest form of education. There have been women in the past who have proved to be efficient in the fields of literature, science, statesmanship or art. Physical training for women should not be neglected. It is possible that because of physical weakness, women may have to submit to stress and strain. Physical training is therefore very necessary to strengthen their abilities. Today, women are making great progress in various fields. They should be provided with opportunities where they can come at par with men.
in almost all fields today education has helped women to become good statesmen and also has proved to possess better many okay ye dobara karna thoda sa theek hai nahi ruk jao main ek paragraph dobara kar raha they should be provided the opportunities where they can come at par with men in almost all fields today education has helped women to become good statesmen and has also provided to possess better managerial abilities education of women should not be neglected they should be encouraged to scale to greater heights thank you jai hind so that's how you know a good speech about women empowerment is there okay so i hope you understood the essence of this speech it talks about women how important women are to society how important they are to family right and they should not be neglected their education should not be neglected you know no form of discrimination should uh, you know be given to women because uh, god has created everyone equal you know whether it is male female or any other particular gender right so we should not uh, neglect anyone we should give proper attention to everyone their education their sanitation their health right everything should be given in equality so that's what the idea here is about women empowerment okay the women who are actually you know uh, burdened down with the society or with the things and they are not given equal opportunities they should be given that and that's the idea of this speech here, which has been beautifully carved out in this speech so i hope you have understood the the meaning of speech writing and what are the things that you need to be careful about conclusion is there introduction body everything is present in this particular speech so i hope you have understood and this will definitely be helpful to you if not in your exams then definitely in your life when you grow up and you give speeches this is definitely going to be a good help to you uh, okay then i'll see you in the next video and this is tarjinder from the winning edge thank you very much